bottom line is, is that um, carbon dioxide, this is evidence that carbon dioxide does indeed absorb infrared radiation. This is the transmission spectrum from the IR spectrometer. And there's two major regions of absorption, one due to the stretching, the asymmetric stretch, and um, another one due to the bending. Okay, so um, here's another um, IR transmission spectrum. This one's for water. Okay, take a look. What do you think? Is water a greenhouse gas? Yes or no? This is an, an IR transmission spectrum. And so what we can see here is that um, there's also uh, two regions of, um, of absorption. Um, or limited transmission, one up here and one down here. Actually, it looks like you're kind of a region, a region, and then the, another one, another one. And um, so clearly, um, the water is also absorbing um, infrared radiation. Now, water, of course, um, looks like this. So if you had to guess, um, would you think that, that this uh, region up here is due to the stretching action? or the bending action of the molecules. Remember, stretching is going to be some kind of a, a stretch, um, maybe this way and that way, and maybe this one's going in one direction. That would be an asymmetric type stretch. Bending, the whole uh, molecule could be bending up and down, and, and up and down, back and forth. So which one do you think would be due to the stretching? If you look back at the, um, at the carbon dioxide, the stretching takes more energy so we would guess that the stretching um, absorptions are here and the bending absorptions are down here. Okay? So it's a, it's a molecule with uh, more than two atoms, so it's capable of undergoing stretching and bending, and we see different absorptions for water as well. Um, if we put um, other gases that we would consider a greenhouse gases, such as ozone or CFCs or nitrous oxide, we would see similar types of uh, spectra. But notice the spectra are unique. They're not exactly the same um, because the ex each molecule is going to have its own unique spectrum based on the shape and the type um, of the atoms in that molecule. So each molecule will have its own unique spectrum. It's like the fingerprint of the molecule. All right. So now I think we can answer, uh, you know, what is a greenhouse gas? A greenhouse gas is any gas that can vibrate in response to the absorption of specific photons of infrared radiation. Um, and so those that can do that, carbon dioxide, we've already seen, water, we've seen the spectrum, methane, nitrous oxide, ozone, and, and the CFCs. They're all molecules that um, have um, more than two atoms, so they have, are capable of bending and stretching. And because there's um, uh, more than two atoms, the stretches can be, um, can be asymmetric. Now, um, the... the um, the ones that are not capable of undergoing um, a vibrational uh, transitions or vibra absorptions of infrared radiation are the, um, the simple diatomic molecules. And the reason why is because in order for the, um, in order to have an absorption, I'm just drawing these out. This is chlorine. <clears throat> you have to have a change in the overall electron distribution of the molecule upon the um, infrared absorption. The vibration has to change the, um, the, um, the, uh, the overall electron distribution. And so in the case of these little um, diatomic molecules, they are, not only are they diatomic, they're linear, but they're symmetric. And so what that means is this side of the molecule looks exactly like that side of the molecule. Um, if there's only two atoms, according to the rules of, of vibrational um, motion, if there's only a stretch that is allowed um, to occur, and so only a stretch could occur, and so the only type of stretching that could occur in this case is going to be a symmetric stretch, um, the molecule, the overall electron um, distribution isn't going to change. So since it's only capable of undergoing symmetric stretching, then no, um, there's no absorption. All right? So these do not act as greenhouse gases. All right, no IR absorption. Okay, so now we have um, answered our question, you know, why do not all gases, all gases don't absorb infrared radiation, only some do. 
um, the absorption occurs as a result of the vibrations that are going on, and the vibrations are, are bending and stretching, and they have to be um, asymmetric so that the electron dispersion across the molecule changes with the bend and the stretch.